this is Sidney Sullivan from the National Association of Women in Business and today I'm talking with a very dear friend of mine, Sabuba Shakia, who is from HealingBridges.org and you're going to want to remember that website when you hear Zabiba's story. Hi Zabiba. Hi Sidney. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Thank so you. So very, very me. excited about having Sabuba today because she has just finished, you just pretty much finished. She just the, opened, yeah. She just opened the first girls high school in a refugee camp in Sudan, which was an amazing undertaking for her. And Zabi, would you mind telling us a little bit about your story? Sure, I actually came from that refugee camp. I'm originally from Eritrea, so we had war and other things. So I left Eritrea and went to Sudan. And um, after 30 years, went back in 2008, but between 1981 until now I've been uh, in America and going to school and business. I had my own business for almost 20 years and it was great. Um, but I always went, want to go back and really do something in the refugee camp and um, in 2008 I went back and um, it, was, it was challenging but very rewarding. Um, so I build the first high school for girls and it just opened in uh, July. And how many years has it taken you to actually get this this bit school built? It actually took a year for them to say yes and to approve it and it took six months to build it. So it just opened in July and we have, um, it could hold uh, 350 girls. Uh, 350. Yeah, so that's it's, it's really beautiful and rewarding. Um, so I'm going in December to see it, and then that's, uh, to me, that's more than any thing that I achieved um, in, in life, so that will be... That's been the most exciting achievement for you so far? Rewarding, and just to see the girls' eyes and to see their mothers, um, you know, I mean, when I went in 2008, that's really what they wanted to school, a high school for their girls. And um, and it wasn't easy. And I, and you know, they knew it was going to take time. I actually, they actually told me, like, we don't care how long it will take you. I know many tried for years. Um, literally, there, there was people that tried for five to ten years and it didn't happen. So it was just time and I'm grateful and, and many to come. And if I remember the story cl correctly, you actually had to sit for a long time, wasn't it um, a whole month and wait just to see officials? I was there for a month, yeah, you have to meet different ones and uh, different meetings, hours of uh, waiting for and when she a meeting. And when she told them that she wanted to build a school for girls, what happened? Well, you know, there's no high school in the refugee camp and, um, in eastern Sudan, that's where the Eritrean refugees are. And... Um, I mean, there's not even a high school for boys. So by nature, in, in Africa, usually girls get married early, and um, to build high school, you really need to build for boys first before for you know before any other high school for girls or uh, or um, anything else. So yeah, that was the. So it was an issue fast. a little bit. Um, yeah. But you know with time and, and persistence, it, it happened. And you uh, you felt that it was really important to get the girls educated because you were going over there earlier to help with medical care, weren't you? Well, you know, with Africa, there is so many AIDS and, and it's been, you know, decades and decades of um, with AIDS, but I think the, the problem is really education and self-sustaining, that's what it's going to solve. You know, I'm from there. I've seen it. I've been there. Um, so to solve the problem, the poverty is educating, you know, boys and girls. But once you educate a woman, it's totally different. Um, you know, the cycle can end there. You know, you educate them and help them. You know, educate the group of the girls and the children, and have the mothers be self-sustained. That's really the solution for Africa. Yes, uh, I've been hearing a lot of uh, very uh, educated women like yourself talking about this, that you really do, in order for us to empower the women there and break the, the cycle of poverty and 
unfortunately ignorance in some cases, isn't it? With some, well, maybe not ignorance. It's it's more culture, isn't it? To to some degree. Well, it's tradition, tradition, mm. and then and it's not like they don't want to educate their girls. They just see it. Um, you know, at first it was really hard for me to hear. You know, why don't you build a high school for boys? And when I asked, when I start asking the questions, why? Because um, the girls they get married younger. They so marry them kind younger. Of age? What kind of age are the girls getting it married? It really varies from country to country, but in general, you know, you know, thirteen, fourteen. So they feel if you educate the boy, then he could be, you know, the husband and he could work. Um, but I kind of had to go around that, and I just said, well, but how about if you educate the, you know, the daughters, then she can tutor her boy, her son, mm. and and she's, you know, she's more knowledgeable, and the son could be a better man. Yeah, so in a way, you you could be educating the next generation of teachers, We too. have to, that's really, yeah. that's the only solution anywhere, but especially in in, in Africa, we just have to change that mindset that girls don't need to be educated uh, because they can get married earlier or it's not tradition um, it, that's not the solution we have to educate them and we have to help them to be self-sustained so that's and the how next can people step. get involved with this project because I know you always need to help don't you yeah the school is open now um, through you know funding and my own saving but uh, I have to maintain it to be um, continue to be to sustain it so we you know through our website healingbridges.org um, there is people can donate and you'll be coming on regularly and talking to our members about the progress yes um, and everything that you're achieving over there yes I will I will be going in December so when I come back we can that would be nice that we'd love to have you. And in fact, we'll get Sabiba to talk a bit about her um, her business too and her experiences in business and how you used that experience in, you know, when once you became a visionary and started really making change. Um, you know, it's a profit or non-profit um, really is not a big difference. You know, you just, you know, for profit, you use the same marketing that you use for non-profit. It's just it's not going into um, your business. It's going to the business of the nonprofit. So, um, and it's actually a lot easier to talk about a nonprofit for me because I know it's not for me. Uh -huh. um, but not growing in America, coming from Africa, I didn't really have that limitation. Because um, when you come from a different country in Africa, I mean, different country to America. Mm -hmm you know it's just the limitations there is no limitation um i just knew i can open a business wherever um place or space that i want as long i have the knowledge about that business that um, i want to be in i think that's really the key too you really have to have a knowledge of the business uh, when it comes to profit, and you have to have a passion. Mm -hmm. The same thing with nonprofit too. You know, uh, you ha really have to know what you're doing, and and you have to have a passion for it. And where did you get your education in business? How did you learn? When I came, I didn't really like school, <laughs> so for me, it just made sense just to really be knowledgeable of what I wanted to do. So, nutrition was my um, passion. So I, I went to a nutritional school, and um, and that's when I had the business about, and, and, and it evolved. It became more like into a holistic uh -huh. um, way of nutrition. Um, and I had a business in Santa Monica here in California for about 15 years. Mm. And then when I decided to uh, do um, work in Africa with children, I sold that business, mm -hmm. and it was it was very um, successful, and I sold it, and I'm grateful. And I congratulate you for that because you were you were traveling the world, weren't you? And and then you settled here, and before I came to America, mm -hmm. you mean? Yeah, actually, from Sudan, I went to Saudi Arabia, and then to um, Europe, and then came to America. Um, 
but after I sold my business, I also traveled um, to Southeast Asia, really to learn how to, um, again, it's just the same thing. When you have a profit business, you really need to know the same thing with a nonprofit. I knew what they needed, but I, I wanted to know how it really worked. So I went to India and other countries to learn about microfinancing and orphanage, how they run it, and mm. in the schools. Ah, so you did do some research. Well, you really have to. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's non-profit or a profit. You really have to do your homework and, and have a passion for it. So we actually do have quite a lot of charities that approach us and um, would like advice on, on how to run their charities more like a business. Would you be interested in running some other interviews for us to help some of those people get some tips on what's worked for sure, you? Sure, anything uh, I could help, yeah, well, that'd be definitely. Wonderful. And uh, we're just so excited to have you as one of our contributing experts, Aviva. And we'll be posting regular um, news about how it's going with Healing Bridges because you have other projects too that you get involved with, don't you? Um, I, I just, my book will be coming. I wrote a book about my life and the school and Sudan and the refugee camp. So um, that's about to come. Oh, exciting. Yeah. When yeah. is it coming out? Um, we, we're working on that. We're working on that with the publisher. I have a publisher, yeah. but yeah, we, um, I'm working on that. So we'll be able to tell you about the book when that comes out. Congratulations. Different. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so just so thrilled to be able to tell everyone about this very, very worthwhile cause. And um, this woman inspires me. She inspires me to get up every day and, you know, try a little harder. And I want to thank you very much for everything you've done. And thank you. And I'm um, grateful for you you to be here and uh, wish you luck so don't forget it's uh, healingbridges.org and you can find out more about Sabiba when you become a member of the National Association of Women in Business thanks thank you